Okay, so hurdle number one was getting the bell housing on. Hurdle number two was doing the pilot bushing. And what I done was ordered an oversized uh, pilot bushing from uh, actually O'Reilly's on that one. And I think it was $7 or something. And the uh, I'm not sure what it was the application was. I just done it by measurement. It was bigger both ways than I needed. So then I turned it on the lathe and got it ready to go. It's in. All right, folks, see where I'm at. I have got the first plate clutch and all on. It's lined up. Uh, everything's good to go. Uh, i got to go back through and torque the bolts because i only done it with the impact, so I want to make sure that they're right. But uh, here's what I've done on this. I had to cut the center out, so I just torched it out. I put a old brake drum around it and or on top of it and just torched it real quick. It was no big deal. Uh, wasn't worried about it being too neat trying to keep as much weight as I can because I want this thing heavy on this end uh, so I just cut away what I knew I had to so this clears the uh, first plate real good and we're going to leave it just like it is now this has got the alignment here and as I said before it didn't have it on the other side and I was going to machine it in uh, my rotary I don't have a I don't have a rotary table I got an indexing head my indexing head uh, wasn't solid enough to do it and get it right so what I ended up doing, uh, it just, it had so much chatter and so much movement in it that I ground the lip off of the bell housing, which was this little lip. It had, it was about a quarter inch wide. And then uh, now this fits flat. So of course it don't, you can see it moves. So the plan is to get this transmission in. You know, it's gonna line up on the engine, but it's not gonna line up right and be solid on the, you know, transmission here. So. The plan is to get it where I want it and tighten it down good and tight. Now, we're not going to rely on the bolts, of course. We're going to tighten it down good and tight, and then we're going to drill it in probably three or four places and put dowel pins in it to go through the bell housing into the our adapter. And if we dial it, it won't move. And then, uh, you know, it can still be taken apart and put back together with no problem. Now, I'm probably still going to take a piece of angle iron and probably drill it where it bolts here, comes in, and then curves back to here and has a curve in it and it gets welded to this plate and it can be unbolted and taken off. But that's probably how we're going to do that to hold this end of the engine up on our plate because there's our mount. We just got to get this in. But I mean, there's not a lot of pressure on that, but we want to get it right. So that's where we're at now. We're going to go ahead and uh, see if we can get the uh, engine transmission slid together since I took them torquing bolts up and Put a little grease on a few things and then we're going to uh, we're going to have at it all right all right folks so now we're sitting there back down in uh mounts done i'm trying to decide on a few things here i don't have it all the way down because i've got to move it back but i gotta get this drive shaft in first anyway i want to show you what we've done here now i've not drilled it yet for the for the uh dial pins i still got to do that i actually forgot but here is what we ended up doing. So I just put a piece of angle on it and cut the angle out at the same shape as this plate and uh, mounted it to the plate. So the plate is now part of the mounts. So that should work out just fine. I had to cut that one back a little bit because of the starter, but you know it really don't matter. It uh, there's not much there's not much to them. I mean you got them back here and then you got the front mounts too, one on each side instead of one in the center. So that's uh, help supporting it so she's not going anywhere that's all done uh, next thing is to get the drive shaft up in and then start I want to go as low as I can go up here and hopefully if I can I won't have to do a bunch of fabricating and changing on this other stuff but I'm gonna go as low as I can so if we go two on that end and we're able to do an inch on this end that'll keep us angled toward the drive or toward the rear end and do us good so I guess what we're gonna do uh, I'm actually tomorrow I'm gonna run one cable I'm gonna run a snatch block up here and that way we can run uh, one back there on it and then one up here on it and pick this thing straight up and down because uh, with this roof on it I can extend the boom back it's not a problem but it hits the roof and uh, I can't go back any farther because I've got it on blocks and my wheel lift hits and I really don't want to pull the top off of it so we'll deal with that tomorrow okay okay so uh, today I went up to 
Virginia looking at a couple steam engines and uh, pretty rough uh, and pretty big and heavy uh, one of them's pretty rare and they they're neat as can be but I I don't know you know we're we're in the middle of some discussions on them and stuff but uh we'll see what happens I'll bring you more on this but I'm gonna go ahead and show you the video of the uh, the engines here hey folks Jonathan here all right on an adventure <laughs> it's a heck of an adventure too uh, we have got a big engine here and I wish that I need to look and see if I've got my measuring tape with me but uh, we'll measure this flywheel this is a half of a flywheel there's the that actually goes on the end of the crankshaft for the uh, exciter motor because this is an automatic engine it's actually a uniflow and I don't know what brand it is yet we're going to try to figure it out but it looks like it's got about a 12 inch solid crankshaft and at least there's the rod and another half of a flywheel there's the outboard bearing cap uh, the eccentric I think everything's all here of course somebody stole all of the uh, parts off of the generator all the copper I say so they come in here and probably cut it with a sawzall or something uh, it looks pretty open here right now but I think when the uh, when the leaves are on the trees it would be hard to see down in here so I think they snuck in and stole everything so there's an old treader here a very old treader and on that treader is the engine itself and it's a big one it's a uniflow because it says it right on the front and it is actually a Skinner okay so it's a Skinner uniflow and it's huge I would say probably at least a 24 inch bore it's a shame that it's been out here on this weather for all this time Okay, hopefully you can see it's going to be rough here, but we've got a, an oiler here and you would hand prime it and then it would take over mechanically. This is a really a huge engine. This makes my Harrisburg I've got look tiny, believe it or not. And this is actually on an old trailer and uh, it's been here for years. Now the guy that owned this actually passed away 20 years ago and you can see they it had wood bunks on it and of course they're gone everything's down to the metal and I don't think the treader would be usable to move this thing and I don't know what it weighs it's just got to be a crazy number uh, I don't know I'd have to maybe do a little research which probably wouldn't help <laughs> we got to find out if the main cap for the top of the engine is here I think that's going to be the main factor as to whether it's worth saving or not yeah, I don't see any of it. It's a shame because it's still got paint on it, too. Must have used some good equipment paint back then. All right, so this is a cover you take off to put the pin in for the rod. So the rod was taken out and it's laying over there. So it's going to be about a, looks like a five inch pin, solid pin for the rod somewhere. And then the lower bearings in it. So there's one of the wedges. So it looks like it's probably missing one wedge. Uh, there's something laying there. I don't know what it is. Okay, that's nothing. Nothing is for this. Okay, so we got one wedge there. And it may only take one wedge. I don't see grooves for the other side. So one wedge. We're missing uh, all of the top bearing, the top cap. We'll have to look and see what we can find. All right, let's we'll see what we can come up with. You tell the people that stole stuff, stole stuff for scrap. They took the tags off that Skinner engine. They actually took the tags off this, which probably was Westinghouse. And this was done pretty, pretty recent. And it's kind of funny because the only thing holding this up is this rotted four before. So this is actually like a death trap for somebody. 
Alright. I'm a looking. I'm not a seeing. Okay, that's the cat for there for boat. Now there is one eccentric rod and there's another eccentric rod. So that's not it. So, oh man, there's the panel. I need that for mine, but it's okay. Let me see. Just not seeing that cap. Okay, folks, I actually located it. It is actually right here, upside down. Found the pin for the rod. And like I said, there's for the eccentric. The panel. Uh, it's a GE generator. It's not a Westinghouse like I thought. And this is a frame, I think, for the front. It goes underneath the front of it. I think all this goes with it. I think that's the oiler. So, let's walk down and look at the other engine. Okay, folks, here is the engine that I like a lot. Our York compressor, made in York, Pennsylvania. The base on this thing is just beautiful. It's still got paint on it. We're guessing at least 30,000 pounds on this one. So. One side is a compressor and one side is a engine. All right, so we got trees growing up through it. And the trees might have been the reason that that plate right there is broke. And that's for the dash pods for the coilless. So let's go around to the other side and see if we can see it. There's quite a bit of stuff broke on it, which is a shame. Now this is the uh, compressor side. So this would have been in a, uh, they used them in breweries and places like that, but this would have been, you know, refrigeration or basically an ice maker, really. Uh, this is what they've done with them. See the stuff growing around it. It's just crazy, these vines. Oil are down there. It probably got knocked off by this tree. And as you can see, the tree is growing inside of it. Right there. It's going to be a job. And I'm sure everything's been rained in. So here is the coral side. Like I said, the plate being broke off, I'm sure it was probably part of the problem was the tree. So the tag is off, but he does have the tag. And he actually, I hopefully gonna send me a picture of it. I'm not sure what brand this is, but I've seen this before. Uh, this style rounded up the top. So, probably just this head and stuff was supplied, I'm guessing, by the cordless engine company, and then the rest of it was supplied by York, or built by York. It's a neat piece. It's a rare piece, of course. They ain't too many of them left in the world. Getting it out is going to be a pain in the butt. But, man's got to buy it first. And that's even worse than a pain in the butt. 
and man come up with tools and take it apart. Disconnect the rods and then disconnect it here. And leave these cylinders. Hmm. Oh no. Alright. Anyway, I got decisions to make. You all know me, I usually don't mind tackling about anything, but these things are big and heavy. And uh, they're wanting scrap price. And I'm guessing between the two engines, it's probably about 100,000 pounds. So, I don't know. Okay, folks, uh, I'll give you a little update on what's going on with the engines up there and the, uh, that I showed in the, uh, the forklift. The forklift, I'm still moving along on. I do have the engine in, the mounts done, a bunch of the other stuff done, and I'm videoing that. We're going to put it in another video. Uh, this is a power unit we're putting together for my edger. Uh, got a double bearing, a, a really heavy duty bearing that can handle some side load. Do some machining, this will come out the back. This is the trailer I come from Gene on the, uh, that had the Frick engine on it. And this is of course the Mercedes diesel. The only thing I don't have that I need is a governor, a belt driven governor. And I had no clue that <laughs> the belt driven governors went stupid on price. Uh, I looked on eBay. You know, there's only a couple companies that make them. There's Hoof and there's Pierce. And, you know, I used to deal with them a lot on working on sawmills and stuff for other people. But uh, I had bought them before, and I remember paying about $120 for one. And I, I, the first one I come along, they wanted $1,500 for. And, you know, twelve dollars to $1,500 is pretty common for for a belt-driven Pierce governor, a new one, or even a Hoof. So <laughs> we're going to find something to use one or something. Because, you know, you need a governor because when you get into a load and it starts to draw the engine down, you got to have something to rev it back up. And, uh, you know, these injector pumps don't have governors in them, so uh, not hard to do, not hard to put on. Just if you ain't got it, you ain't got it. But uh, I said before I pay that kind of money for one, I'll hook a string to it. And every time I run a board through, I'll just pull the string. And, uh, yeah, that's, I'm just not, I'm not going to pay that kind of money for one. It's crazy. Uh, I find a used power unit cheaper. So, uh, anyway, uh, the two engines, the big uh, Skinner engine and the York engine, I think uh, figured out that the York was uh, made by York, but even the cordless part, but it was made under licensing, you know, from cordless, and uh, they had permission or, or whatever to do it. Uh, that's an early engine. There's a couple of them engines, not exactly the same as that one, but uh, most of them have two... Uh, both uh, cylinders down there are engines. One's a high, high pressure side, one's a low pressure side, and then they have upright compressors that they run. So it's an oddball engine. It's very oddball. I'd love to have it. I absolutely love to have it. Uh, but the problem is, is the Skinner comes along with it. The Skinner is a heavy, heavy engine. Uh, you know, 100,000 pounds of scrap weight uh, is just a lot of money. And I don't have that kind of money to be putting into two engines that I know are probably yard art. I doubt they'll ever be running again. Uh, it's really a shame. You know, it's not even, it don't bother me as much on the Skinner because there's quite a few of them engines around. Uh, you know, I know of a couple already, but uh, that York, I've never seen one. And it's just a shame that I know where it's going to go. I know it's fate. And unfortunately, uh, usually that is because of money. Uh, you know, the owners of stuff like that sometimes say they want to save something and they want to get it in the hands of somebody that can do something with it, but they want to make sure their hands have as much money as the junk man. So, you know, if the junk man has as much or more money, then they're going to, you know, sort of not worry too much about it anymore and let the junk man get it. So I've, I've got a feeling that's where that stuff's going to go, uh, unfortunately. And uh, hopefully, you know, maybe somebody else will go in there and get it. But, you know, I just don't, uh, I don't have the money to be able to, to invest in the, something that I know, you know, you're not going to make money back on that. So anyway, so uh, let's, let's hope not. And, you know, I'll try to keep anybody updated on it if I find out. 
So anyway, more on the forklift and more on this here. Uh, this is like a, a quick throw together on this. Uh, probably going to put two jacks at an angle. We can lower them down and then we'll use that front jack to actually get this thing set where we want it. Uh, instead of putting it on skids, we'll put it on, we'll keep it on wheels and tires. And I uh, actually, wheels and tires that was on it. And then I've actually got a couple that I've had for a long time that are good. We'll stick on it. Just because these are flat, that don't mean we're going to scrap them. We'll, keep, we'll save them for spares. Anyway, all right, let me get at it. Appreciate everybody watching. Until next time. Bye.